Yeah, my name's Lee Warren. I'm the BI product owner here at the uh, at Head Forwards. So I'm working with my colleagues, Alex Six over there on the left. All that was down here. They do the fancy kind of flashy techy stuff, and I do a little bit of the wordy stuff, which is a little bit more boring. But hey, you've got to go through the pain, right? So painting by numbers, which I've had a lot of grief about, but that kind of summarizes what we're about. We're talking about visualizing data. That's what it's all about. So what do we mean by BI? Anyone got any ideas? Any hands up? Is it power BI? Power BI. Okay, it's technology. Yeah, that's good. Anyone else? Yeah, but what do we mean by it? What does it mean? It's 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 a a BI, but... <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> it's a fancy way of saying BI. It is a fancy way of saying BI, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, all right, let's, let's, let's move this on a wee bit. So people often think technology, come back to your point earlier, and data. And it is those things, that's, that's very important to confirm that is those things, but also what it is, it's about people and process. So just to give you an example of, of that, um, one of the pieces of work we're looking at at the moment is, is looking at journey time for people getting to and from work, this is with our client. And we're looking at how we can reduce that. So it's not just looking at technology and the data, we're looking at the data to begin with, and technology is an enabler, but what we're trying to do is look at how that affects people, how the journey for people is reduced, and how that can offset the carbon footprint and how it can improve process around the organization. So all those things come together and that's BI. It's not just the technology, it's not just the data. So what does it give us? It gives us a shiny little light bulb and it gives us, I've just picked four things. You could go on at length for this, but I'll just pick four things. I'll go through them quickly. So the top right hand corner, legal compliance. Organizations have a statutory obligation to report back on their performance. Um, and the way you do that is by surfacing data. Fairly straightforward. Top left-hand corner, assurance. Now, before BI came along, people were doing things. People got by okay, all right? So what BI does, it gives you the assurance that you're doing things the right way. And what that means is then you can invest more time, money, effort, and resources into following that path that you're already on. The next two, risk and opportunity, they're, they're linked very, very closely. They're both sides of a coin, essentially. But if you don't understand your risk and your opportunity, how do you know how you're performing as a business? How do you know what you're missing out on? How do you know you're heading towards a cliff edge? So data, analyzing data, starting to look at patterns, historical, predictive, that's how you can start to look and manage, most importantly, risk and opportunity. And that's a summary of what it is, it's insight for action. So it's looking at data, it's looking at patterns, it's looking at how you can predict what's gonna happen based on those patterns and what you've seen historically, and it enables you to have informed insight into what you do next. So this is about our client. What problem are we solving? It's a big client in terms of, in terms of headcount, 6,000 employees. It's multidisciplinary, so it's covering a, different, a number of verticals. And this figure this is the one that scares me and probably Paul more than anyone to death. 800 or so data sources. Now they can range from a simple Excel spreadsheet with a few rows of data to say an ERP system with multi-millions worth of data items within it. Zero corporate BI, so until we came along and started doing some shiny stuff, um, there was no corporate BI. It's a completely greenfield opportunity for us to look at what is happening with the estate in terms of data and put in a brand new solution. And that leads on to the next point, the local BI initiative. Now the absence of a corporate BI solution means invariably what people do is they do it for themselves. And they do it for themselves and they don't really have much of an input to what's happening elsewhere in the organisation. Now what we have in this, this client is different levels of maturity across the organisation, different ways of doing things, which presents us with a challenge because what we need to try and do is systemise that and try and get everyone going along at the same speed and up to the same level. And finally, significant demand for insight. People are chomping at the bit for this. It's been built up over a period of, of many, many months. Um, everyone's really excited about BI. And three of us to turn up and uh, yeah what you see is what you get so how are we solving it so with our client these are the things that we're doing um it's a very simple simplistic buckets so the culture kind of refer to that already is trying to get people to look at data in a different way to value it to see it as an asset rather than just something that passes through their hands on a day-to-day -day. it's how they do something with data and do it collectively and understanding that what they do with data has a knock-on effect across the organization Blue sky, we don't want people just to be limited in saying, let's have a look at what we've done with our numbers. It's a case of, well, where do you want to go with this? Let's get under the bonnet of what your business processes are, what your direction of travel is, 
And let's look at how we can surface data support that. And that's getting into the kind of terminology you'll probably be familiar with around machine learning and artificial intelligence. Engagement, you've got to talk to people. I do a lot of that, as the guys will say, back up. Um, and it's about understanding that engagement, taking a step back and saying, right, I know about this area, I know about this area, and now I know there's commonality between the two. So by doing something for you, you will benefit. And that's really valuable. Tactical and strategic, so what we mean by that is, yeah, sure, we've got a strategic vision for how we're going to roll BI out over the next two, three, four years, but that's fairly linear, and what it means is we can't leave people behind, so we have some, some uh, capacity built into our sprints to look at how we can do some tactical support for people, and it's those people that are already doing something in the BI space locally, so saying, okay, you've made a start, let's push you on a little bit further. Uh, shared vision is making sure everyone's on the same page. It, it, it's, it's a fairly trite statement, but it, it, it holds water. It's about making sure everyone sees where we're going with this. We've got a roadmap. We're trying to share what we're doing. We're trying to engage. Uh, we're really trying to roll this out collectively. And finally, platform and service, which is more in your kind of sweet spot, really. It's around the technology that underpins all of this, um, which you guys will talk about in a little bit more detail. So that's me. Thank you very much. So, um, as Liz mentioned, uh, it's not about the data, it's not about the technology. Um, so I'm going to talk for a while about the data and technology, so thanks, Liz. Good pitch up there. <laughs> um, so yeah, the scenario we have is a fairly large user base. They've got several sites, they've got hundreds of servers, and they are hosting literally <coughs> thousands of business applications. And business application is a very grandiose term for what might be a spreadsheet somewhere, but it may go right up to uh, an ERP system. And they've got hundreds of terabytes of electronic storage. What we tend to find is that every business unit will have its own requirements, and they go out and they commission a the system, and it meets their needs, and their data sits in a little silo and doesn't talk to anything else. That's the array of systems, but the universal rule is they don't talk to anything else. And that gives you a bit of an issue for the organisation, which is you end up with silos of data. There's nothing that kind of cross-cuts across all of them. So if you have a person record in several systems, you don't know if it's the same person or just someone who's got a similar name. You may have different data items and you have no way of coming up with a master record and mastering that so that you know what their correct address is. You may have relationships between data that you can't enforce. And obviously that means that when you come to do reporting, you're very limited in what you can give to kind of higher level users in terms of an organizational overview of these things. Uh, so very simple questions like, how many suppliers do we have? How many customers do we have? How many staff do we have? How much do we pay people? 20 different systems might have 20 different answers. So the idea of data warehousing is that we try and take your data sources and we try and combine them, link them, and give you a mastering system. So we start out assuming that we're going to have some nice, neat databases, and we rapidly find out that we don't have nice, neat databases. We have uh, Excel sheets, CSV, we might have some open API calls. You've basically just got a mess of data lying around the organization that needs some sort of rationalization. First step, we bring it into one unified staging area. So at this point, we're basically just picking it up, lifting it, and shifting it. It gives us one common place to go for this stuff, but we're not doing what with it at this point. We then perform uh, an ETL process that allows us to build a data warehouse. So this is where we start to add some value. So we're going to build a model that allows us to actually link these items together. Um, common structures for this um, around kind of um, Kimball and Inman warehousing have their merits. We've actually started to uh, build this out in a data vault methodology. If anyone's even vaguely interested in this, I'm more than happy to sort you through the details, but basically it is a system that allows you to um, very easily model your data and extend it out and bring in linkage between multiple data systems. Uh, what that allows you to do is liberate for your eager analysts uh, OLAP and analysis objects, so uh, cubes basically, any sort of relational data model you want to stick over the top of that, and supporting routine and ad hoc analysis. And the other big benefit of that is that your warehouse becomes your central store for uh, mastering. So you can finally give the organisation this one version of the truth, how many staff have we got, how many suppliers have we got, how much are we spending on this. You can define a single version single point 
but they can go and check that stuff. In terms of the technology we're using for that, we are using Azure quite heavily. So the approach, broadly speaking, is we have relational data stores and flat file drop locations. We use VPN to punch out through the proxy and we hit a storage block using Azure Data Factory. Uh, we've then got some fairly sort of classic integration services to manipulate the data. Uh, reasoning for that is just there are quite a lot of people who know integration services and it allows you to utilize their skills. So within the client, there are already people who have that skill set and we can basically say, here's your data up in the cloud, here's an approach you can use to manipulate it. Um, as there is a little bit of mentioning there, we moved from staging through to the data vault, through to data marts using um, an ETL process in SSIS, and then we surfaced that basically using a data model in analysis services. And we then let people point Power BI at it, which tees up quite neatly with the painter. Thank you. So last in the chain, we've got requirements, we've seen the customer, we understand all the different interactions between this customer needs something over here, um, Paul and the team in the middle have built the data warehouse, these speaks to another customer that's got something else that links in, um, all of that in a warehouse perspective is all available for us then as a BI team, the front end um, versus back end, um, to then um, build some dashboards, build some reports, uh, and interact with um, the end user via data and dashboards. So really quickly, um, and we'll give you a very quick show and tell, um, we've got all our data, um, we can then put it into Power BI. So Power BI is part of Office 365 or the Power Platform, so it's all Microsoft technology. It's a more chosen um, technology now because a lot of businesses, the well, government, corporate, you know, big blue chip companies, everybody's got Microsoft and it's an extension of it. There's lots of different software um, platforms out there. And of course, some of you guys are building your own uh, reports into apps and things like that. So Power BI gives you that core corporate enterprise um, service where actually it doesn't cost a huge amount to the end user in terms of user licenses um, and things like single sign-on it will give you. So if I'm a user in an organisation, I can be given access to a dashboard just logging in as me uh, and I can see all my data. Uh, there's lots of things in there that we can do. Dashboard reports, natural language queries, so you can query to say, what's my sales for yesterday? And if all the right metadata is in the report, it will give you the result and the right chart and all that sort of fun stuff to really help users understand, you know, what's my data, what action do I need to take? Uh, but it doesn't stop there. So we can integrate with, um, use Power BI, you know, use an embedded service to put the tiles and the, the different uh, charts and visuals that you can see in the online service into apps via embedded. Um, you can talk to it with Siri or Cortana. So if you've got the app on your phone, um, you can then go, hey Siri, show my, my sales dashboard or something like that. And of course, getting your data out, you can use things like if I'm an end user, you know, a manager, in an organisation, I still want to see some more granular data I can export into Excel and um, still do my pivot tables, but all my data is mastered in the cloud. So I don't need to have all this back-end experience, I don't need to use loads of third-party tools, um, it's already provided to me in the dashboard of the report. So all of that is great, I'm sure you'll love that sort of stuff, but you know, we're all, we're all techie people, we like to show, we like to see things. So what we've got is an example of the Power BI service, so I can log in as me, Microsoft login, um, and someone in the organisation has given me um, some data about public health in Cornwall. Um, we're in Cornwall, um, this might be of interest to some of your clients, ours have certainly got an interest in uh, public health or health services in local communities. So this is an example of a report in Power BI. As you can see on our Wi-Fi, all of this data might have been um, uh, run overnight, so it's up to the, the latest data of yesterday. This is all open data that we have used APIs um, to pull that data in from the cloud and things like um, Office of National Statistics or the NHS or Police Service. We can put all that into the data warehouse using Paul's wizardry craftsmanship, which baffles me, um, and I can just stick the fluffy nice stuff on the front. Uh, what this allows me to do as a user, you know, I want to interact with this, you know, that's quite small, I might want to see a bit more granular data on here. Um, you know, I can click on an individual tile or report, make it bigger, I can now see my numbers, I can interact with it. So, you know, if we're looking at Truro or Red Roof, um, how many people, population or age, 0 to 4, 15 to 19, etc. We've just limited this example to under 20s. 
I can use charts, pie charts, donut charts, scatter charts, all sorts of interactive visuals. Um, what this really does provide is, is that kind of one version of the truth. Anybody else in the organisation is all going to look at the same data. Um, I might screenshot this, I might export it as a PDF or PowerPoint. The way we work with our client is to give them a base guideline of colour scheme that aligns to the corporate colour scheme. If I go and try to export this and create a PowerPoint that I then need to share with my team, it just goes straight out into PowerPoint with the data that I presented. I can use filters and slices on the page. So if I actually want to go down by a specific LSO, uh, uh, LSO, MSO name, um, I can just click on Bob Minise. That will then filter the whole page for me straight away without me having to do any sort of queries or um, you know, different um, uh, interactions you might be used to. Um, there's a lot of mapping services that we're doing. So things like how many people in terms of population live in a particular MSI or ward or you know, district that you might be used to. And we can do some interesting visuals when you hover over an individual area, it will give you a split of data. Um, I can filter on a specific area and it will highlight and give me the data in the chart on the right hand side. Um, all sorts of quick interactive things. The enablement of Power BI is to give the user data, let them make their own interpretations of it, and then do, some, do something with it, take some action. Um, so that's just a couple of examples really. So um, lots we can do, we can embed all these tiles into online services as I've said. Lots of different charts and visualisations we can do. Um, mobile reporting is really clever, I'm interested in time, I can't show you mobile demos, but this could be using a mobile app, uh, responsive so it all works, it's all vertical, or, you know, I can click and interact. Um, and that's pretty much what we do. So um, thank you very much. Um, time for any questions or um, anything else we're done. Thank <laughs> you.